Hi there. This is Tamara Rubin, Lead Safe Mama, LeadSafeMama.com. Uh, it is Saturday, February 23rd, 2020, and I am showing you a few things today. Uh, one, I wanted to tell you a couple background things, which is this is my office now. I just, and, and because people complained about how yellow it looked, my husband painted the walls white, yay, and I got some lights so that it doesn't look as dark, and I'm hoping to get, um, make it actually look more like, you know, a YouTube channel and, and, and do some fun stuff in here and have some shelves uh, with stuff with lead behind me so that um, we can actually start making this seem like more like a, um, I don't know, you know, a regular YouTube channel. So, so um, in the background, I have a map of the United States with my trip. You can see that was one of my trips. I think that was um, not the most recent one, but the one before that. Uh, I think October um, uh, drawn in the lines on the map. And then another thing I just added to the background, if you can see that number 35, it's on this side, yeah, 35 right there. That's the number of people who have helped me uh, with loans to cover the legal actions against me, the 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 um, actions against me that have attempted to destroy my advocacy work. So um, I'm going to be starting to pay those people back soon and I just wanted to have that number in the background and it'll go down hopefully and you can cheer me on as I raise the money to pay those people back. Um, we're still in the middle of this lawsuit and we will be probably for another 18 to 24 months and suing the state of Oregon for multiple counts of civil rights violations against me for initiatives that essentially came together to uh, try and suppress the work that I do, the, my, my free speech and my ability to share this information with you here on Facebook and social media and elsewhere. Okay, so I have a few things I want to show you and we're going to start with this. This is a brand that I recommend avoiding at all costs. I just, just don't like the brand because they have had lead in baby cups uh, until as recently as 2008, I believe, 2007. And, um, and they have really high lead products and they're a really well-known brand that you love and trust most likely. So this is a Wedgwood teacup. Um, I don't have the age off the top of my hand, head. It, it, the readings on this were between 20 and 40,000 parts per million lead and this is where the glaze is contiguous. It's like throughout the cup it's the same. So basically if you're drinking coffee from a cup like this, and especially if you use it on a regular basis, you're likely drinking at least some lead um, and probably to the point if you use this every day you would be uh, noticeably symptomatic and there are other studies that have shown about um, coffee cups causing problems and something like this is a really good example of a coffee cup that is an unsafe level of lead and you assume oh it's just plain white it's not a problem it's not highly decorated and it's a really nice brand and it should be fine and we trust this brand but nope, not the case you shouldn't trust that brand and so then Another one I have that I thought we'll do a white cup. This is white. It's not the same color white. It's a different color white, obviously. And this is like an old diner style mug. It's got that really heavy weight to it. Um, and kind of fun. It's a Nestle's mug. And I don't know how old it is. I assume this is from the 30s or 40s, maybe the 50s. And it's a um, sterling Let's see, I always have trouble making this the right way, but sterling, it's usually said, a lot of the sterling pieces say sterling vitrified china or sterling china. And these uh, generally come in uh, between, again, 20 and 40,000, sometimes higher, sometimes 50,000 parts per million lead, any of this vintage sterling stuff. It's made in America, I believe, Ohio, I think. And the most upsetting thing about this brand for me, this uh, this sterling brand of, of, of um, ceramics uh, dishware is that this is what the armed forces used during World War II and I had several examples of it but they got taken from me and with all that stuff that got taken from me so I don't have them anymore I had this World War II and I have pictures of it on my blog if you want to look but I had this World War II um, era US Marine Corps um, dish and it was my 
great uncles. He was a doctor in World War II, and I, it's apparently everyone seems to <clears throat> borrow a dish to take home, and or more than one, <laughs> either from college or from the military. And those uh, sterling dishes that were used in the military in World War II had lead in the 40 to 50,000 parts per million range, and they were heavy use, obviously being used for multiple meals a day, not just three meals, because I'm sure they had meals in rounds, and so each set of dishes would probably use for six or nine meals a day. And uh, those are our servicemen that were eating off of leaded china, made in America, leaded china, that um, they were eating off of every day. And it was probably well-worn um, and leaching. So definitely um, upsetting. So that that's a brand to avoid, sterling. And then here's, so since we're going with this, the theme of white china and white teacups, I wanted to share this with you guys because everyone's been asking me, what about the white Ikea? So this is a white Ikea, pers um, in a fairly recent one. Um, and I'll, I'll be posting a blog post with this. You can see the numbers on the bottom. I don't know, that's upside down. Whoop. Here we go. It's a white Ikea. And the glaze is lead free, completely lead free. So, um, <laughs> no, Christine just commented on the Facebook Live video here that everything's full of lead, but here it is. Here's something that's lead free. <laughs> um, so, and, and if you do want to know how I test the products for lead, just look up under lead testing on my blog, leadsafemama.com, tamarubin.com. In the header of the blog, there's a um, tab that says lead testing, and one of the uh, links is how do you test things for lead. So, so this is a, um, a cup from Ikea. The glaze on the outside is lead free. Multiple tests confirm this. There's a slight edge you can see of unglazed ceramic which is in a lot of pottery and I often test this edge to double check if there's any lead in the edge because it's nice to know if the substrate is high lead or not. And in this particular one the substrate tested positive for low levels of lead. I believe it was under 50 parts per million in the 30 to 50 parts per million range. So even if this was bare ceramic without the lead free glaze on top this would still be considered in the lead safe range but the lead free glaze that's on top of it basically protects uh, uh, the user from access to any of the lead that might be in the substrate. So when I find things like this, I don't have a problem with them. They're in lead safe range. Um, the, uh, just so you know, the testing methodology that I use to test is an X-ray fluorescence spectrometer, which is a scientific tool used to test consumer goods for lead and other toxicants like mercury, cadmium, arsenic, and all those things. And um, it's, it's uh, replicable results, science-based and accurate. And so something like this, I would be fine having. I, I don't want it in my house. I prefer to have a completely lead-free mug. This is my, hold on a second, I tested this one from Ellen and it also has the unglazed bottom and both the um, the the outside and the unglazed bottom were lead-free. So this is 100% lead-free but like I don't know how much this one was. This is maybe a dollar or two dollars and this was thirty dollars. <laughs> So I don't know, you know, if you don't have $30 to send a, spend on a wholly lead-free mug, something like this from Ikea is a really good choice. And in general, I do think Ikea is a good choice, but I have recently found a lot of Ikea pieces that are glazed with decorative elements and colorful glazes to have higher levels of lead than I had previously. So there was like a spate of about, I don't know, six or eight years in the middle of the last 10 where they were not seeming to use any lead in the glaze, but recently I found it where the uh, leaded, uh, lead levels in the glaze of some of the ceramics from Ikea is higher than the lead level in the substrate so therefore you know that it's in the glaze and yeah they're safe and they're leach tested but I still like to avoid um, any lead and therefore I avoid glazed ceramics unless I know for sure that they are 100% lead free. So uh, let's see sticking with glazed ceramics this is a kind of fun thing I just liked it because it just reminds me of my childhood let's see in 1983 I was 14 and this is, um, the, the neat thing about this is it's from Avon. I have, I have several examples from Avon on, on my site. And it kind of reminds me of, you know, Holly Hobby. And this is about 10,000 parts per million lead. Now, you're not going to use this to eat off of, I, I hope, unless you maybe bought this as an, at an antique store and wanted to give it to your child to play with it for a tea set. That I would definitely not uh, recommend doing because this is, like I said, about 10,000 parts per million lead. And I anticipated that it would be given both the age, the fact that it's from Avon, and the level of decoration on the plate. And um, again, I don't think this was well used at all because the, the decoration seems to be in really 
really good shape. So if you're only having something like this on the wall as a decorative item, that's great. But the problem is that in most cases, children are going to get their hands on this and might actually say, oh, look, let's have a tea party. And then they're going to eat off of it. And then it's going to get worn and washed and used. And then at some point, the lead's going to leach. And so I don't think these are a safe choice to have in your home. So let's have a couple of another couple fun things here. This is like completely cool. This is so cool. Wait, can you see it? It's a New York World's Fair and it's from 1939. And yesterday I did a little video and I talked about lead in silverware and the concern for lead and vintage silver from the years like 1890 to 1910 or 1920. And this supports that this is not leaded. This came in as lead free. Um, it's only about 500,000 parts per million silver, so 50% silver. But it's still a really cool thing that it's from 1939 and it's lead free and it's from the World's Fair. I just love this. Um, and it also shows us a date after which it's likely that silver is going to be lead free. So if you have a baby spoon, which was the conversation yesterday uh, in the video, if you have a baby spoon from 1939 or 1935 or newer, it's probably going to be lead free. Somehow they figured out in the manufacturing process how to eliminate lead from the molding process at that time. So then I have a couple of other random things here. Um, someone sent me this whale. They thought, oh, this whale looks like it would have lead because I, I don't, I can't read the date on the bottom. Uh, I'll post it when I post it what the date is. But I think she said it's probably the 80s or, um, or early 90s and it's lead free. And the interesting thing about this compared to the dinosaurs that I posted yesterday is that it's a little rubberier. It's like got a little bit of flex in it. The dinosaurs that have the lead that I've posted a lot of have are, are like more brittle, harder plastic. Um, <laughs> and I just got a question on my Facebook live video here. It says, how do you test? How do you figure this out? How do you test all the items? And yes, I do all the testing myself. I do independent consumer goods testing. That's what I do um, because we can't trust our federal agencies and a lot of vintage stuff has led and no one's looking at the vintage stuff. So I test these things so you can look through the over 2,000 pa um, pages and posts on my blog to see what you have and everybody, I get a question a lot like I can't find something on your blog. Well every page on the blog has a search bar so uh, on the home page, it's on the bottom. On every other page in mobile, it's either on the top. It's on the top in mobile. And on every other page on desktop, it's on the side to the right. Just put in keywords like look up whale <laughs> or toy or rubber toy or vintage toy. And you'll see all the posts with those keywords. And you can see at the top of each post also, there's a list of keywords. And you can click on any of those keywords to see the other items in that category I've tested. So getting to vintage toys. Um, someone sent me these. Because there was a concern about, I believe, um, Duplos from the, um, now I don't know if these are Duplos or Mega Blocks. I don't know the difference. But there was a question about whether or not Duplos from the early 90s had lead. But in fact, um, these are not Duplo. Uh, I don't know if the owner knows that. I'm going to tell her. Whoops. Let me try. I'm trying to get this so you can see the logo. They're Tyco. This is Tyco. And all of these were lead free. Um, and then this one is not Tyco. I believe this one is probably Lego. I can't see. Yeah, it's tiny in there. So um, yeah, it looks like it. Oh, this is the Duplo one. Yeah. So the difference between the Tyco and the Duplo is the Duplo has uh, open circles and the Tyco does not. But in any case, these are early 1990s and they're all lead free. There are some from the early 1990s that I understand had um, high levels of lead and I think the yellow blocks. And I have never found one of those, never tested one of those. I do have Legos from like the 60s and 70s that I've tested, several on the blog, just put Lego in the search bar. And they have, uh, they tend to have high levels of cadmium. And so I say, you know, avoid the certain colors of the vintage Legos, stick with new Legos, new Legos are generally fine. And then someone sent me something that I had never seen before. I like, I like things I've never seen before. It's kind of fun. Um, Cause like, I don't know what to expect. So this is something, I guess I wasn't young enough at the time that these came out. These are from the eighties. These are called flexi blocks. I don't know if you've seen them. Um, they look like Legos, but they're but they have little hinges, so you make a line and they all snap together, um, and they and they move, they rotate. I didn't actually try playing with them, but look, yeah, so they go either way. And the interesting thing is, so the red ones were lead free, um, the blue ones were lead free, but the green ones had lead in the nine hundred to 2,000 parts per million range. So 
these are very high lead, considering the amount of lead that's considered toxic in an item intended for use by children today, anything manufactured today intended for use by children, needs to, by law, be under 90 parts per million lead in the paint glazer coating and under 100 parts per million lead in the substrate. These came in at between 900 and 2,000 parts per million lead. Like this was about 900 and this was about 1,700, 1,800 parts per million lead. So is that a problem? Well, uh, this is a little bit more philosophical, but the question is, are you um, putting them in your mouth and is the lead wearing off into your hands? I don't know that there's any study demonstrating that lead from a hard plastic that isn't painted like this, where the lead is imbued into the plastic as part of the colorant, is wearing off onto your hands. I don't think anyone's done a study like that. So on the um, principle of first do no harm, I prefer not to let children play with any of these things because it hasn't been studied. There is a, an argument that could be made though that they aren't going to wear off onto your hands because it's in the plastic, it's it's bound, it's a fairly low level, it's not like 20,000 parts per million lead like we find in lead of brass. And in this particular one, the face is not painted with lead paint. So um, maybe your kids can play with these hard plastic items and not have a concern for lead poisoning as long as they're not putting them in their mouths and they use really good hand washing. For me, it's not worth it because my kiddos have permanent brain damage from being lead poisoned, my son Avi, and um, my other kiddos tend to put things in their mouth regardless of their age. So it's not worth it to, for me to have something like this around when you can have, you know, a lead-free alternative um, in all colors. And there's so many neat Legos today. All right, that's all the things I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, um, please let me know if you have any questions. Also, feel free to go to leadsafemama.com, tamarubin.com. I'm Tamara Rubin, and I will do my best to answer your questions. I had 1,948,000 readers in 2019 alone, so I have not been keeping up with all the questions, but I'm trying. I'm really trying. Um, so do ask questions. Use the search bar on the blog, and let me know um, if there's anything that was confusing today and uh, please do share my posts because the best thing you can do to help support this work is to share it with your friends on Facebook and also um, Twitter and emails and in person, in person's best uh, because if the more people that get this information and understand the impact of uh, toxicants on their children and also understand the impact uh, and the fact that that it is very common in household items, um, the better. And we have, this is my son Charlie, he's um, 11 and he just came home so I gotta go. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. Talk to you later.